in today's video, I would like to work with you on the Azure Event Hub that you can see here with the design and the Terraform code. So in this video, you will learn three things. The first one, how you can use it directly from the template catalog. Then how you can set up your own organization on Brandboard by inviting all your team members to join the organization, creating different teams and creating different projects, and then setting up your Git and Cloud credentials. Then, in the last part, we will look together at how you can use the CI-CD to make sure that this infrastructure is secure and cost-efficient. So, let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is that we are going to the template catalog. So here, we are going to look for Event Hub. So here, to be able to use it, you simply need to clone the template into a new architecture. Once you have done it, as you can see, you will have the design and the Terraform code. So here, to better understand why and how we have created it, then you can look at the readme. So here, you will be able to read the description, the architecture components, the requirement, and how to use the architecture. Then the second thing that we can do is that you can here invite all your team members to join the organization by specifying their email address, their roles, and creating teams. So here you can create different teams by specifying their name, who would be the admin and who would be the members. Once you have done it, you can create a different project. Here, you simply need to specify the name, who will be the admin who would, and what would be the environment that you would like to create for each project. Now, you can go back to the architecture selector. Here, this is the way you will work on Brainboard. So you have different projects from Brainboard community to use cases. In each project, you have different environments from dev to webinars, for example. And in each environment, you have different architectures. Here, for example, we're working on this one. So we simply need to modify the name here. You have the name, here the status of the architecture, then the description, and the tags, and here, when it was created, updated, and the UID. So now you update it, and you go back to the design. Now you can look at all the Terraform files with the main.tf, with all of its resources. Then you can also look at, for example, the providers. So here, for the provider, you simply need to go here and specify that you want to customize it. Here, this is how you can customize it. Then you have the variables. So for example, for the variables, you can simply look here at the variables. So you can create them either at the organization level, project, environment, architectures. For example, for this architecture, we have created three variables. Here, location, synapse, and tags. For example, here, for the tags, we have specified the name, the architecture, so the scope, and the type map. And then we have included the default and the description. And here, for example, it is architecture. The name is synapse, then string, and then default. So here, this is how you can create and manage all your variables. Once you have done it, here, for example, you look at your remote backend. So to set up your own remote backend for your dev set files, you simply need to go to data. And here, you can either use AWS S3, Azure Blob Storage, Terraform Cloud, or Brainboard Backend. Then here on Brainboard, so a quick reminder, Brainboard is a multi-cloud solution. We are using, for example, here in this use case, Azure. To set up your credentials, you simply need to specify all of these fields. And then here, you can also use GitHub, but you can also use, for example, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, and GitLab. So now let's go back to the design. Here, for example, I was showing you how and why you should set up your Git credentials, for example, to create pull request. So here you can create pull request by using all of these Git. You specify the project, the base branch, and the description. And then you can create the pull request directly from Brainboard. Now what you can do is that you can modify this architecture. So here, these are all the resources that you can use to modify and to add new resources on this design. So here, one advice that I will give you will be to create a new version. So here, it could be initial 
commit. Here, for example, let's say that you would like to add a new storage account. So here you simply need to look for storage account here. And then simply need to add it here in the design. The add account will be automatically open. Here you have the requirement parameter, the advanced configuration, and then the meta arguments of Terraform with the count that depends on and for each. For example, here, let's say you give it a name default. You close the ID count. And as you can see, you don't need to write a single line of Terraform code. It has already been written for you. So here, what you can do is that you can create a second version. Commit. And then here, you have a global history of all the changes that happen on your infrastructure. For example, here, if you want to roll back to initial commit, then you can do it. And here, if you want to go to second version, you can do it as well. And here, as you can see, the Terraform code is automatically updated from your design. So here, we'll roll back to initial commit. Here, as you can see, you have the main.tf. Let's say that you would like to create multiple Terraform files on Brandboard. For example, here, what you can do is, as you can see, you have two resource groups. Here, you select this resource group. You select all of these resources. And then, you simply need to group the resources in the same Terraform file. And you call it, for example, rg2. And here, you have created a new Terraform file with all of these resources. And here, what you can see is that you have the main, and then you have the edge. So now that we have done it, here you also have one action. So here, these are the Terraform commands that you can do on Brainboard. You can either do Terraform validate, plan, apply. So you can also provision your infrastructure directly from Brainboard, or and you can also destroy your infrastructure by doing the Terraform command. What you can do as well is here, for example, if you want to make sure that this infrastructure is secure and respect your budget, then here, what you can do is that you simply need to write CI/CD. Then here, you can either use templates or you can create a new workflow from scratch. So here, this is what we will do. Here is security for example, and cost. Here you can add the description that you want for your own workflow. And then here you can add task. So here you will do, for example, Terraform plan here. Give it a name. Then you add, for example, TFSEC. Here is security check, ignore failure. Here, save, and here, for example, we ignore the failure because we would like, for example, not to notify a team member for him or her to go back to Brainboard and make all the changes. So here, you can either do that by using Slack or send an email. Here is notify security team. Here, for example, is tbbrainboard.co. Here you add check the security requirement of this infrastructure. So here you can customize your own text. For me, it was just an example to show you. Then here, what you can do is that you can add here infra cost. Here is cost estimation. You add UIPI key. Then here you can do either breakdown or diff with a breakdown. Save. Here, we say, for example, FinOps. Here, email. .co. And here, check the cost of this infrastructure. And then, what we can do is that here, you can also provision every after you have created your pipeline, you can provision infrastructure directly by doing, for example, a Terraform apply. Here, provision infrastructure. Here is require approval. And here, for example, you can add, let's say, 
that's him. So here it could be, for example, him, Benjamin, and then you save and close. So here you have designed your own CI CD workflow and then you run the pipeline. So here you will see that you will have the status of each task. So here it's running, here it's pending, and here you will have the output as well. So here, as you can see, it's running. And here we will see that we need to add 25 resources to add. So zero resource to change, zero to destroy. Here we have the output of the TFSEC. So TFSEC basically scan the Terraform code and detected potential vulnerabilities. So you have the output. And here the result, the status, the impact, the resolution. And here you have the documentation. What we did as well is that we need to find the security team to go back to Brainboard and check that everything must be valid. Here we have Terraform. So here the budget of the infrastructure and the cost of the infrastructure is actually 68.80. So here we can see that we have the name, monthly, monthly quantity unit and monthly cost. Here, a team member from the finance, finance team join Brainboard and is checking that actually the budget is being respected. And here you can provision directly Brainboard from your, you can provision directly the infrastructure from Brainboard. And here you can see to run this task and approval is required. So here you can look at the status, the pipeline, where it failed, the, the name of the workflow and the initiator. What you can do as well is that here, for example, you can use, let's say, Drift. So you can use it as a template. So here you can see that the workflow details with the name, the description. Here it will be scheduled every day, let's say, at 10 a.m. And then, so... You provision the infrastructure from Brainboard and then you run the drip detection on a regular basis. And then here you can have various workflows, security costs, the one we have created together and the drip detection. And here what you can do is that you can convert this workflow into a template. And then you can use all of these templates here directly that you can build. Now what you can do as well is that here we go back to an architecture selector. As you could see, you have different environments. And here you can either create the template from the architecture or you can clone the architecture, choose the target environment, and then it will be like, for example, here, if I show you, from dev to prod, next. Here you can sync or you can keep them isolated from one another. And then you can clone the architecture. For example, if I do that, As you can see, now we are in prod, you open it, and then you can continue managing it directly in this environment. So I hope this video has been useful for you. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to help you build your own use case and your own infrastructure on Brainboard. Have a great day.